Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to show you how you can figure out if a course or an educational program or a seminar or a coaching or mentorship program is worth the asking price. Now, the method that I'm going to show you is the same method that companies use, big companies, when they're looking at investing in a certain project or in a certain asset. It's a, a kind of scientific way to figure out whether or not it's worth the asking price. So if you've ever had an offer for some coaching program or something similar to that, which you thought it might be a really good investment, but you're not just not sure, then this is going to help you uh, get a little bit more clarity around that. Now, if you're familiar with my work, you might think that this is somewhat self-serving of me since I do, in fact, offer courses and coaching packages, and you would be completely right, actually. This is totally self-serving of me, but you still have the ability to think critically, and it is completely up to you to analyze whether or not the things that I'm saying in this video ring true with you. And I actually got a bachelor's degree in economics and an MBA. And I don't really talk about that very often because I just don't think it's very relevant. And frankly, I tell everybody I come across not to waste your money on college. And I'm actually gonna show you in this video why it, it doesn't really make sense. Um, but anyway, this is one of the few things that's actually applicable that I learned in that coursework because the, the course material that I learned, especially in the MBA program, is the same as the decision-making strategies that all of the big companies Companies are using. Okay, so let's start with the super basics. The, the most basic way to determine whether or not a course or education program of some sort is worth it is ROI, which, which stands for return on investment. Basically, what you want to figure out is whether or not the return, that is the amount of money or the amount of value that you're going to get, is less than or greater than the amount of money that you are paying for the course or the program. So we use this term uh, ROI as an accounting term, return on investment, and that just equals return divided by investment. So let's say that you spend $5,000 on a course. Then your investment would be $5,000. So let's try that, put $5,000 for the course. Now, if you make, let's say you make $10,000 back, then the uh, 10,000 divided by 5,000 equals two. So we would say you have an ROI of two or a two times ROI. Your investment of 5,000 yielded double the amount of the investment. Or if you, know, if you yielded 100,000, then you'd have a 20 times ROI. Um, or let's say that you only yielded 1,000. That would be a 0.5 times ROI. So basically anything where the ROI is greater than one is you're getting more money than what you paid out. So that would be, in, in pure monetary terms, that would be a good investment. Now there is, a little bit more intangible stuff to consider there, such as, for example, the time that you put into it. So let's say that you, I mean, you invest 5,000 into a program and you also spend 20 hours on the program and you get a ROI or you get 5,000 out, right? It'd be 5,000 divided by 5,000. It would be complete wash. You didn't lose any, you didn't gain any, but you spent 20 hours to be in the same situation you were before. So really, if you consider the time, then the ROI is kind of negative. Okay, so that's concept number one is the ROI. Now, it's hard to use this just by itself because to be perfectly honest, you don't know what the uh, return is going to be, right? You know what this number is, you do not know what this number is just yet. So one way that we can deal with that is through a concept called expected value. Again, this is what corporations use when they're valuing uh, potential investments. So let's define expected value. So I'll just put EV for short. Expected value equals, let's say payout times probability. So let's use a really simple example again. Let's say that your course uh, promises that it can make you $100,000, right? Let's say $100,000 over the lifetime of the course. So your expected value, the, the payout is $100,000. So your expected value in this case equals 100,000 
times the probability. That is, what is the chance that it's going to come through? Right? The, the fact of the matter is that even the very best course or program that you can get is not, it's not going to be 100% probability. I mean, the closer you get to 100% probability, the better the course is, but it's never going to be 100%. And the reason for that is because there are always variables that are a little bit different. Some business could have worked for one person really, really well. Uh, it could even be working today for that person really well, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work tomorrow because there are different variables, because the market could change tomorrow, because um, because maybe that person has some, some sort of advantage that, that you don't have, you know, and it's impossible to really control for all of the variables. So the truth of the matter is that probability is never 100%, right? You never 100% guaranteed an outcome. So the way that we deal with this is we uh, come up with, with multiple scenarios. So let's say that the course that we're looking at, it looks pretty good. It looks promising. The um, selling proposition makes sense. You could, you could imagine, or maybe you've even seen the business model working in the past, or you've seen the need for whatever it is that you're providing in the market, um, and you have a realistic way of getting it. So let's say that, just to be conservative, let's say there's a 50% chance it works and a 50% chance that it doesn't work. Right, so what we would do is we would multiply that um, one hundred thousand dollars times 0.5, or fifty percent, and so what we get is fifty thousand dollars. The expected value of the course or the program is fifty thousand dollars. So basically, any any number, any price tag that is less than fifty thousand dollars in this case would be worth the money, or at least it would get a positive ROI. Okay, so this is basically the simplest way to do the uh, expected value equation here. So let's try something else. Let's put a few different options in here because chances are it's not a matter of, of you know, you're gonna make $100,000 or you're gonna make zero and there's no other possibility. So let's say that uh, instead we get, we have a few possibilities. So Let's say we can make 200,000, we can make 100,000, we can make 50,000, or we can make zero. And just for the sake of simplicity, let's say that all of these outcomes are equally likely, right? That means that we have four outcomes. That means that we have a 25% chance in each of the outcomes of, of that being the outcome that you get. So let's say, uh, we'll multiply all of these times 0.25. So in every case, the chance is 0.25. And so we get, uh, this would be 50,000. This would be 25,000. This would be 12,5. And this would be zero. And then what we have to do is we have to add all of these together. So it's 50,000 plus 25,000 plus 12,5 plus zero. So this would be 75, 80, 87, 87, 500. So this would be our expected value is $87,500. So if we plug that into our ROI equation, let's say the, uh, the price tag of the course is $10,000. So if that's the case, then our ROI equals 87, 500 over 10,000. And so what you get there is an uh, 8.75 times ROI. So for, for every dollar you put in, you make $8.75 out. So if this is the case, we would say this is a good investment, right? This is a really good investment because you're making a whole lot more, um, even considering the uncertainty, than the $10,000 that you're investing up front. So hopefully that makes sense so far. Now, I'm going to add one more uh, little screw in this because there is this uh, funny property about human value that as, as return increases, value actually goes down.
This concept is called diminishing marginal utility. So think about it like this. Think about, <clears throat> I could, um, let's say that, that you have $2,000 in your bank account, and I say, if you, if you uh, bet your $2,000 with me, I will do two coin tosses, and you can, you can say heads or tails, and if either one of those coin tosses comes up as the one that you chose, then I will double your money. I will, I will give your money back plus an extra $2,000. So you'll have $4,000. So if you're going to do this, uh, if you're going to analyze this from expected value, what you have is this. You have the chance of getting $2,000, right? Because that's the $2,000 extra that you're getting. And since you only have to win one of the two coin tosses, then you actually you have a 75% chance of getting it. So 2,000 times 0.75. And then you have uh, the other chance is that you lose the $2,000 that you had. So we're going to put negative 2,000 times 0.25. And so we calculate that out. That is 1,500. And this is negative 500. So put that together. Uh, you get a, an expected value of, of $1,000 positive. So from a pure expected value perspective here, the $1,000 positive is pretty good. This is a pretty good deal that you should probably take. However, when you include diminishing marginal utility, it might change things. So it depends on your situation. So let's say that that $2,000 that you have in the bank account is what you need to pay your rent. And if you can't pay your rent, then you're going to be evicted. Uh, well, then all of a sudden, this second part of the equation where the possibility of losing that money becomes more important than the possibility of winning the money. So even though there's a greater probability of winning rather than losing, the, the downside is so bad that it does not justify the possible upside. And this is always the case. So if there is any possibility that you will not receive a return on your investment, uh, then, then don't put yourself at that risk if that money is not money that you can risk, right? So that's the first point is don't, don't risk being homeless for an opportunity, right? Find some way to earn the extra money so that you can, you can afford to risk that money without putting yourself at a ton of risk. So that's the obvious bit, but then to get into diminishing marginal utility in, in a little bit more detail here, the fact is that the first $2,000 is always worth more in terms of actual value to your life than the next $2,000 or whatever, you know, whatever denomination you use. So for example, let's say that, um, that I give you $100,000. I'm just feeling really charitable and I decide I'm just going to send you $100,000 to your bank account tomorrow. Well, you're going to be pretty overjoyed with that, right? And probably you're going to go pay off any debts that you have. Maybe you're going to buy yourself a nice car. You're going to buy whatever it is that is most valuable to you that you can afford with $100,000. That's what you're going to pay for with that first $100,000. And then let's say that a month later, I'm feeling charitable again, and I send you another hundred thousand dollars. Well, this time you're gonna be, you're still gonna be pretty happy, right? Because it's still a, a lot of extra money that you get. But on the other hand, you're not gonna be as happy as you were the first time. And the reason for that is because the first hundred thousand dollars will have covered the the things that you wanted to buy or to pay for that were most important to you. And so after those are already paid for, the second set of $100,000, you're going to buy things or pay for things that were less important. So the, the most important things always get addressed first. So the money that you make first is always more important than the money that you make afterwards. Or in this example, with the, the $2,000, if that $2,000 is your rent money, that is the most important uh, $2,000. And then another $2,000 that you make on top of that is nice but it's not as important as the $2,000 that you already have because of this principle of diminishing marginal utility. Because you put the money that you get first towards the most important things, and then everything after that is less important. Okay, so let's apply this to our course or coaching program example again. 
So again, let's say the program costs ten thousand dollars, and we've decided that uh, the the expected value is two hundred thousand, uh, or that's one possible payout, and that's twenty five percent chance, and hundred thousand. 25% chance, 50,000, 25% chance, and zero, 25% chance. Well, what we could do here is we could, we could realize that even though these, are, these four are all equally likely, they're not all equally valuable, right? So this zero times 0.25 is really it's more important uh, that you that you don't waste that ten thousand dollars initially because that ten thousand dollars is going to be worth more than every every increment of ten thousand that comes after it, um, right? So you have to weight it accordingly. Now the fact that you can make two hundred thousand, which is what's that twenty times the initial investment, the sheer magnitude of that can definitely overshadow the, um, the importance of the 10,000, right? If, if it was just purely you, you can earn 20,000 or you can earn zero for your 10,000, both, both equally uh, likely outcomes, then it would clearly be not worth it because the first 10,000 is more important than the next 10,000. However, when you're looking at uh, the possibility between 10,000 and 200,000, well, the fact that this is so much bigger than that 10,000 skews the, the equation in, in the favor of it being worth it. And so you could add uh, another multiplier on the end here to make up for this. Or in fact, just to make it a little simpler, let's just modify these multipliers. So let's say we add uh, plus 0.25 to this one. We add plus 0.1 to this one, then we'll add minus 0.1 to this one, and minus 0.25 to this one. And this works out because the, you know, the plus 2.5 and the minus 2.5 cancel, the plus 1, 0.1 minus cancel. You know, don't, don't worry if you're not following the math, by the way. Um, actually, I shouldn't have chosen 0.25 because that just makes this zero which uh, just doesn't really make sense. So let's, let's call that 0.2 instead and call this one 0.2 also. Okay, so basically what we get is 200,000 times 0.05 now, which would be 10,000. I'll just write 10K. And then for this one, we get uh, 0.15 times 100,000, which would be 15,000. This one we get 0.35 times 50,000. Get that on my calculator real quick. 0.35 times 50,000 is 17.5, 17.5K. And then this, of course, is still zero. Okay, and then we add these up. We get 10, 25, 32, 32.5. So including the diminishing marginal utility, uh, we're still at a expected value of $32,500. And then if we compare that to our investment, we have 32.5 or 32,500 over our investment of 10,000. We now have 3.25x ROI. So for our investment, we're making more than three times what we invested. So this would still be a good investment, even considering the diminishing marginal utility. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. That got a little bit more mathematically complicated than I had actually intended when I went to make this video. But the, the point is kind of overall that any, any course or program that has a reasonably good chance of getting you a, a very large result is usually worth it. I mean, unless it's just a completely astronomical price tag, it's usually worth it. And so uh, even if, you know, it, taking into account the fact that nothing is 100%, like nothing is guaranteed, and also taking into account the fact that um, the first, first dollar is worth more than the second dollar, the, the diminishing marginal utility there. 
And it really sheds light on the problem with human psychology really is that, that we're very timid animals. Uh, by nature, that we are always a little bit more focused on the downside than we are the upside. So, and it's based on our evolution that we're, if there's a pot of gold on one side of us and a saber-toothed tiger on the other side, we'll pay more attention to the saber-toothed tiger because, you know, if we're dead, then, then we can't really enjoy the pot of gold. So it kind of makes sense in a very primitive um, environment. However, in a modern environment where you're basically safe all the time and the worst that could happen is, is barely worth, worth uh, noting when you're actually looking back on your life, then a lot of times it makes sense to just take that risk and go for it. And so if you find yourself in that situation, then, then try this expected value exercise because you can prove to yourself mathematically that it's worth it, right? If it has a reasonably decent chance of success, and it's not, uh, it's not gonna keep you from paying your rent, then in many cases, it's worth it. And by the way, this isn't just true in, with courses or programs that will help you to make money. A lot of times it's true in other things as well. So if you want to uh, get in shape or you wanna be healthier or you want a better relationship, you know, whatever it is, that you can do the same thing actually. All you have to do is you, you put a monetary value on the thing that you want. So you put a, a monet, so you think about if I could wave a magic wand and have my weight problem go away and, and like lose 30 pounds, for example, or I could wave a magic wand and have a great relationship with somebody who's perfectly compatible with me. Um, how much would I be willing to pay somebody to give me that result? Or how much would I be willing to pay for that magic wand that could do that? And then you'd use that as the basis for your expected value calculations. So say there is a program where you find your perfect lover in, in six months, uh, for example. So if, if the result was 100% guaranteed, how much would you be willing to pay for that? Um, so maybe you're willing to pay $100,000 for that. Just you know, take a number off the top of my head. So what you could do is you could plug that in the same way. You could say the success is worth $100,000. Let's say that I give it a 50% chance of success, so I'd have $100,000 times 0.5 equals 50,000, and then um, you know the other option is, is not success, so it would be zero times 50% equals zero. Right, so you could calculate it that way. And then it'd be the same thing. You figure out whether the expected value is greater or less than the amount of money that you have to pay for the program. I think this is a really good way to look at it because people tend to be kind of torn between two camps. There's the kind of aspirational dreamers who uh, are the ones who achieve things, and then there are the, the cynics that don't ever achieve anything. But on the other hand, the aspirational dreamers are more likely to get ripped off, right? They're more likely to be more gullible, uh, but they have a chance of achieving something, whereas if you're a cynic that doesn't believe in anything, then you're absolutely definitely going to fail, but you're not gonna get ripped off. Um, and so this is kind of the way to, to mediate between the two, to kind of prove to yourself whether or not it makes rational sense to take action on something versus just staying put and never trying anything because you might get ripped off, because you're afraid of something not working. So give this a try next time you're seriously considering any kind of course or, or coaching program and it will give you a more methodical, rational method of determining whether or not it makes sense. And I don't mean this to be a substitute for intuition, by the way. I believe in intuition. I believe it makes sense to follow your intuition because your intuition is based on uh, a variety of factors that your conscious mind is just not really capable of accessing. However, what you can do is you can use this method to evaluate or to verify your intuition. So if your intuition says, yes, go for this, this is the opportunity, then, and you're probably a little bit nervous about that. You think, okay, well, I don't know, what if I get ripped off? What if this doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you can kind of set your mind at ease if you go through this analysis and it comes out that the expected value is in the positive. You can, you can have that peace of mind that you did your due diligence. You just didn't get a feeling and jump right into it. That feels icky for a lot of people, myself included. So if you can get your intuition and the math and the numbers on the same side, then you can be fairly confident, I believe, that you're making the right choice.
So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. Leave me a comment if you appreciate this. I always love getting your comments. If you have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments. I might just make a YouTube video about it. And as always, share this video if you think it would be of benefit to somebody else. So thank you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also really enjoy this video as well.